Hey everybody, all my followers, be welcome to another video. So, just finished the Mini, and uh, which was actually parked right here. And uh, the Mini is outside waiting for collection. And we have now a Astra J 2010. And the engine is just about to get to 90 degrees to the running temperature. Uh, the, the reason why I mention this is because what I was told the, the car the problem with the car is is that once it's warmed it starts to run poorly so uh, and the engine light comes on so as you can see at the moment uh, the car the engine light is not on and the car is running pretty much okay to me it's running smooth uh, no problems at all uh, I'm gonna show you what the scan on this car is that was done by the owner of the car, not myself. So uh, this is what I was told the car has. Okay, so as you have seen, that's the fault with the car for the running lean, I think it was, and a map system or something like that. Anyway, today. Uh, not for any particular reason, just because I haven't used it for uh, a long time and I thought it would be interesting to use it today. We're going to be using the MDI, so we're going to get the laptop ready and give a scan, look at some live data, uh, leave it running here for now to see exactly what happens and go from there. Okay, and here we have uh, GDS, GDS connected, so Astro J 2010, blah 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 blah. So let's gonna go enter. I hope the glare is not gonna spoil the video. So let's gonna scan this, go to the engine, the engine light still off. And the car's still running okay, so I'm a little bit confused why the guy said it would run. Still running okay. Oh, uh, oh no he's not. It starts to go up and down the revs. Let me show you this. Let me show you this. Hold on. Actually, let me open the bonnet so you can actually see exactly what he's doing. It's very faint, but... The cooling fan is running at the moment, so you can't really hear it too much, but it's definitely Hope that comes through the camera okay Can you hear that? There you go you see me? So that's why it does. Glad it starts to do it. Engine light's still off at the moment. So let's go and scan the car and see exactly what we have. Okay, and I should have been showing you this as I was uh, scanning it. So there we go. So we have a P106 uh, 0106 uh, uh, fuel, sorry, uh, manifold absolutely pressure, map sense performance. This was actually uh, passed and failed, and um, the engine just started to run a little bit even worse, and it became current. At the same time, my ESP light came on. My fan, radiator fan, is full throttle. Uh, I do have fuel trim lean current, and I have manifold absolutely pressure, and map sensor circuit low voltage. Um, Low voltage, yeah. Oh, there we go. Passing failed again. So that change, have you seen that changing? Oh no, sorry, that's me. No, no, yeah, yeah, it changed. Look at that. You see, it went from current to pass and failed. Obviously, the ESP is understandable if the ECU cannot it has a, a something that will affect the torque of the engine. The ESP will stop working. So this is my codes uh, right now. Um, this is my code. <laughs> so we have performance and map sensor circuit low voltage. 
Right, let's gonna look at some live data. Let's look at some live data. Uh, no, not that. Don't need that. Uh, let's gonna go to data display. <coughs> uh, let's gonna go to uh, fuel trim. Fuel trim short. Oh dear, thirty-six percent. Uh, short 33% uh, long term fuel trim fuel trim learn enabled fuel trim blah 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 short fuel trim test average 12% average 29 uh, control loop status closed uh, voltage on my O2 sensors they look like they are stuck oh no that the battery yes it was crap okay connected to the mains back up and running so obviously because that went off a lot of stuff has changed here uh, as you can see up there short term it went to zero so I might have to go back perhaps and try to log in again see why he tells me now okay no actually that that just stopped just went to zero because my fuel trim learn is now disabled now my O2 sensors they don't look to fluctuate the way they should so that's not very good in there so we're gonna have either an air problem or a vacuum problem 72 intake air temperature 22 degrees so that's fine airflow meter okay that's a little bit of a discrepancy here Engine load. Accelerator position is on zero. Yet yeah, throttle position is going all over the place. <coughs> Map sensor fluctuating a little bit. Intake pressure. Okay, so looking at these live data. Right, it looks like we're gonna have a, a leak somewhere. Okay, fuel pressure looks okay. Map performance one malfunction. There we go, it goes on to malfunction every now and then. Meal request not yet. Okay, let's go back. Let's gonna kind of look at my EVAP data. Okay, uh, so. Okay, oh, that's the same stuff. Oh no, he loads different data. Okay, so 5 volts reference, it shows me all okay. So I guess. Purge 0%, most likely because obviously it is sort of in limp mode, not run, so it's not gonna. Okay, so it's not gonna run until the engine is actually back and running normal, most likely. Um, what else I can look in here quickly? Okay, I don't think I have anything else to look around here that's gonna be too important. <clears throat> and I don't have nothing else here really uh, to look at other than my DTCs Once again, let's kind of just confirm that there's a new DTC now O2 sensor circuit low voltage sensor one uh, Possibly yeah, it could be possible because it's not um, He's not going he's not modulating he's not doing what he's supposed to be doing so he detects that because of the lean condition So okay, let's kind of have no, always important guys as I keep saying first thing let's gonna do a very good visual inspection and go from there okay and following day uh, for reasons that does not really matter I could not carry on recording yesterday I did however carried on working on a car now I'm not gonna be here pretending I don't know yet what the problem is because I do and I already have the parts for it however I'm going to take you through 
Uh, I just gonna repeat everything I done yesterday. I should, oh. Anyway, I'm gonna um, I'm going to take you through um, how I got to this conclusion. Um, I'm going to try to do the same testing as I've done yesterday, and I will show you that I can bring the car back, uh, the fuel trims. I can bring the car back to normal, and I can just uh, force it to go lean again. And I will show you how I do that, and I will show you, um, well, I will show you what the problem is, basically. And then uh, we will be replacing the part, and then hopefully we'll have a fix in the end. Now, I know probably is not as good as my other videos where I never know what the problem is when I take you through with me. In this case, uh, I didn't knew yesterday, but um, to be honest, as soon as I get this engine running, and, uh, and we get into the engine bay, uh, you gonna you you gotta notice as quick as I do, as I did yesterday, um, that there is an issue there. Now, um, the main reason I think why this problem only happens when the car warms up a little bit is because um, th while the car is in open loop, um, the O2 sensors are not really used. So uh, during that period. Um, the car just uh, uses whatever preset values he has on ECU to um, to control injection uh, fuel the the fuel mixture, hair and fuel. Uh, once it tries to use the O2 readings, that's when everything goes tits up, um, and I'll show you why it goes tits up. So uh, with no further ado, we're going to connect the MDI again, get everything uh, ready. I'm going to warm up the engine uh, because uh, I wanted to look, I wanted to show you how I got to that conclusion. So let's going to start this. So as you can see, and I'm, I, it's the first time I'm starting the engine today, and the first thing I can tell you is that the engine runs perfect. Actually, let's going to do something. Let's going to plug the MDI and watch what happens as the car uh, warms up and starts on cold. So here we are again. I'm gonna start the engine now and we'll see what happens Okay, so as you have seen I've only had the engine running for a few seconds uh, That was it so as you can see look at my uh, O2 voltage You see where they are See my fuel trims You see the fuel control loop is open so while the fuel control uh, the fuel control loop is open, obviously as I said, the car is using the preset uh, fuel hair mixture values. Uh, once it tries to start to do, once the O2s start to warm up, look at that coming down now. You see that? So and then as soon as the loop goes to closed, that's when the car is going to start to use these readings. To adjust the fuel and hair mixture and then what's gonna happen in there obviously the O2 one is gonna warm up way quicker because it's the one right after the manifold the O2 number two is the one uh, after the cat so it's a little bit it's a little bit it takes a little bit longer to warm up so as you can see at the moment it's running fine it's actually rich a little bit as you can see in there, so the car is getting fuel. It's just closed the loop. So we're gonna leave it to run a few more minutes and then I will show you exactly what it does. Okay, it's not warmed up yet, but I think the only thing uh, uh, what uh, might also worth the mention is just remember guys My evap system is not being used yet So you can see in there It's not being commanded yet that affects uh, things a bit uh, Especially when I show you what's going on uh, Look at my air Calculated and airflow Look how much is pretty much bang on both following each other you're gonna see that these will change later on um, and and all these is important guys so you so everything's gonna make sense uh, once the problem uh, starts to act up um, 
so yeah so just keep an eye on those um, just keep in mind these values so yeah just keep in mind the fact that my calculated airflow and my uh, actually airflow match up they are both the same just bear in mind my EVAP is not being controlled yet and look at my fuel trims uh, long fuel trim is coming down that one is on the negative side the short fuel trim test average uh, sorry the average as you can see in there they are coming down they should be as close to zero as possible for you guys that are not familiar with the fuel trims positive fuel trims basically means the car is running lean um, and the car is adding fuel negative fuel trims that means the car is running rich and the car is cutting fuel is reducing the amount of fuel being injected as you can see now so these values is as close to zero as possible which means a perfect mixture so let's kind of wait a little bit more until the car warms up a little bit more and then we'll see what happens to these values there we go and it starts to hack up so the engine is start to shake a little bit I don't know if I've showed you that at the start I'll show you in a second hold on I just wanted to start to look at my fuel trims look what happens they went from negative or just about correct to look at that now look at my airflow look what the ECU is asking for and look at what actually the sensor is reading can you see that look at my O2s what they are doing now you see they are not they are running lean they went from I should probably have showed you that they went from uh, 0 0.1 to 0 0.9 oscillating all the time uh, we can look let me show you the graphical data uh, for these values here is my O2 sensor running fuel trim state uh, fuel trim oh no where's my O2 it's gonna be down below are they there we are O2 sensor O2 sensor so they are both stuck down here look at that you see I should have showed you uh, what I was doing before I do apologize for that but the engine now starts to surge look at my fuel trims look where they are now short fuel trim at 36 percent that's pretty much the maximum long fuel trim 33 uh, it's still on a closed loop my O2s are now stuck into lean look at my airflow okay now I'm going to show you when we get to the engine uh, you start to get these warnings by the way I don't know if I showed you that um, but you completely ignore this this is just the ESP because you can't control the engine torque uh, he has these faults now on ECU so we so obviously it's normal for these lights to come on uh, but while what, what I wanted to show you now is how the engine is running uh, if I haven't showed you yet uh, but I'm gonna show you as well keep uh, an eye no an eye uh, just pay attention to this to the noise the car is doing um, and then I will show you exactly why it's happening uh, some of you are gonna hear this and gonna say yep I know what it is but for you guys that don't I will show you I will show you how I can correct these values and get the car to run absolutely normal again and um, and yeah let's gonna do a little bit of investigation and um, and that's it okay and when you get down here I don't know if you can feel the engine sort of surging and I don't know if you can hear this vacuum leak there's a massive leak can you hear it so the leak is right there look what happens when I cover it okay okay so what is that that's the breather now inside the breather inside there there is a diaphragm uh, and what happened in there guys is the the diaphragm is gone it's split and when the diaphragm splits it allows hair to be to be pulled in so too much hair the car 
the, the, the O2 starts to read too much hair and what it does is adds fuel. That's why we have those positive fuel trims because the, 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 the ECU is adding fuel to compensate for the extra air. The problem is, is so much air going in that the, the car carry on adding fuel until it hits the maximum which in that case was 30 something percent so when you, you hit the maximum the ECU goes oh hold on a second something's wrong here and obviously triggers the faults etc etc uh, so that's basically why it's happening now to correct that or to try to show you uh, or to, <laughs> how to put it across to help you understand how you can test things like this we're gonna add fuel to the car uh, so basically we're gonna add even more fuel and we'll, when we add even more fuel what the car is going to do is it's going to start to cut fuel because it's way too much fuel the way we're going to cut uh, add fuel is we're going to spray a little bit of uh, i don't have easy start but we're going to spray a little bit of contact cleaner which is a fuel uh, through that little hole and you're going to see that when i had fuel through there my fuel trims are going to drop and uh, because i'm going to decrease the amount of hair being sucked what's going to happen is somehow that membrane inside is going to move i really hope it does what i was doing yesterday so that's going to move and when it moves it's going to kind of seal and when it seals it's going to you're going to see that the car will carry on running um it will start to run normal until i press the accelerator when i press the accelerator that's going to increase the vacuum it's going to pull more the car is going to ask for hair so it's going to pull more hair and that membrane is going to move and then we're going to we, we get back to square to square one so just let me get the things and i'll place the phone in a place where you can see everything happening and you can see exactly what i mean okay so as i was saying um i'm going to spray a little bit of this um uh, into that uh, little hole or two holes in there um and uh, while you're going to see that the fuel trims now came down uh, the short one uh, sorry uh, the fuel trims are still quite high as they were sorry about that I was looking at the uh, the um, uh, the evap valve so as you can see my fuel trims are right at the top both of them and uh, my O2s are stuck to there into a lead condition now I'm gonna spray a little bit of this and what's gonna happen is uh, as I said and just repeat it myself when I spray this I'm gonna add more fuel so the car is gonna cut fuel when the car cuts fuel, because it sees too much fuel, when the car starts to cut the fuel, um, it's going to try to, um, it, the, the, somehow that membrane inside is going to move. And you're going to see these values coming down. And I, fingers crossed it does the same as yesterday. Uh, if I don't touch the pedal, the car will run smooth. And you're going to see, that's why we have these hair in there, is what the ECU is asking for, the calculated airflow. But as you can see, because there's hair going in elsewhere, is now passing the airflow meter so the airflow meter is only reading that because some of the air is getting into the the engine after the the airflow meter which is which is over there on that leak so let's kind of spray a little bit of this and see what happens just uh, one note um ideally i would take the laptop and i would show you but the laptop uh, the battery is a little bit low so i can't really do that right now There it is, it should be coming down now. Look at my airflow. So the valve already moved. So the, the diaphragm already moved. Look at that. Oh no. Uh. Now it's pulling again. Let me put a little bit more. Come on, do the same you were doing yesterday. Come on. Oh, it's actually doing it. So there we go, look at that. You see? The diaphragm already moved, which means it's not allowing air through there, which means all the air for the engine will have to go through the airflow meter. So hence that's now matching. My fuel trims, look at that. 
Uh, short fuel trim, let me see. Short fuel trim, look at that. Zero. Bang on. And what you're gonna see now is that one is gonna start the long uh, sh uh, the long term fuel trim will take a little bit longer to start to drop, but eventually this will start to drop. Okay, my O2s, look what they are doing now. You see in there? Let me show you the graphical data of what my O2 is doing. So it's up there right now. Let's just wait a little bit to see, and you're gonna see it's gonna start to uh, do what's supposed to be doing. If we wait a little bit. <clears throat> there we go. Look at that. And now it goes up. Now it comes down. Now it should go up again. There we go. And in a minute, we'll start. So there we go. It's going to soon start to do what's supposed to be doing, uh, which is, which is uh, alternating from uh, lean to reach all the time. Uh, but obviously, because we that is now 100% sealed. Obviously, the car is never going to run 100%. Uh, now, I do recall, guys, doing one of these uh, way before YouTube, uh, and I actually managed to uh, pull the the breather out, the cover, and replace the membrane in there. But I do also recall that was an absolutely pain in the ass. Uh, because the plastic gets so brittle everything would just break I had to come up with a way of securing everything afterwards it, it, it was it was for a friend of mine so he was happy to do whatever uh, but this time uh, this is 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 a car uh, I don't know I, I don't want to I, I don't want to do that on this car I just want to do it right so spoke with the owner uh, Vauxhall asks for quite a lot of money for that cover 280 pounds uh, that's a little bit of money uh, but my local car parts uh, sell it quite cheap 75 pounds so I went this morning and I bought one uh, which will be fitting now so we're gonna turn the engine off uh, and uh, we are going to get the parts uh, over there get the tools remove the case the cover oh sorry about that uh, remove the cover fit the new cover and, um, and that's it, should be problem fixed. So I'll take you through the lot and then we'll look at these values again and we'll see how the car runs. Okay, so there is, that's where I've been spraying. Uh, so yeah, so the hair is being pulled through here. Uh, inside of here, there is a membrane and that just ruptures, just uh, splits and that's it. So that's the new part. I don't know if this is any, if these numbers are any good. For you guys in case if you need one but there is okay about that oops there is my new part now i want to show you there we go new gasket so this is the bit that is, is really tricky to remove, guys. So once you, when you try to take this off, um, pulley here, all these get so brittle around here, it snaps everything. So I done one in the past, and then to put all these back on, I really struggle a little bit. Um, so just in case if it would happen the same on this one, I didn't want to take the risk. Uh, after all, guys, it's only 75 quid. It's not <laughs> like the end of the world. Uh, so and at least we'll have a new cover uh, probably that cover is going to be full of current inside anyway so we'll do we'll do it like that so and right now we are going to remove this cover we're going to remove this cover not rocket science guys there is one two i think there's one there three four five six seven eight nine ten there's one in there eleven and then these two 13 bolts to remove and the cover should come off
Hey. And I think that uh, this is about good enough to me to put the new gasket and uh, the new cover. Uh, we're just going to use a little bit of uh, head gasket uh, sealant in these two corners here. I will always use on sharp corners, either negative or positive. I leave in this corner because as much as you try, the the seals, the rubber seal never go right up to the corner. So a little bit of uh, head gasket sealant here and that should do the job. Um, also, uh, torque for this guys even comes with the paperwork. Uh, 9 Newton meters, which we will be obviously using it. Um, we're gonna torque this to the right torque. So yeah, it's gonna put it back on and go from there. Okay, happy with this and well that's gonna start the engine and see what we got. Okay, that's gonna turn ignition on. It's going to reestablish communications. Okay, 72 degrees the engine. It's gonna start the engine and hopefully we'll have our problem fixed. Ooh, even shut off. There we go. At the moment the fuel control loop is open. It's going to wait to close this closed. Let's going to see what happens. It's going to give a few minutes and then we'll go through these live data. Uh, just one quick thing I decided to do was clear the codes, which I already did, and it's going to be to reset fuel trims. I think it's worth to do this. Okay, it's going to go back. It's going to reset O2 sensors. There we go, and let's reset my airflow, my throttle body basically. Okay, I've deleted the codes already, was codes in there for manifolds etc, uh, for the pressure and other stuff. So let's cycle the ignition, start the engine, and then look at our live data. Okay guys, right now I'm really pissed off because the, the new cover is actually leaking as well. So, I know I'm not going to be able to take it back because they, will just, they won't take it back after being fitted. They, they won't trust me, they'll say I misdiagnosed, whatever, but it's leaking that cover. Now... <laughs> Now, what I'm trying to do now is with the two covers, try to make a good one. Now, one thing that I've noticed is, so obviously, let's gonna first make sure we got our diagnose right. So this is the old diaphragm. As you can see, it's completely gone. And the new diaphragm is right here. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna try to make a good one out of the... 
Sorry about that. I ran out of space on the phone. I had to delete a few things. Um, now, the, obviously, this is the new membrane, so we have a good membrane. Now, the thing is, when I was trying to take that off, these two bits there, they snapped. So, I don't want to put, I don't want to use the old cover. The new cover, everything actually came out okay without breaking. Obviously, it's new, it's not that brittle. Now, this is the cover from here, yeah? And look the difference between this one, you see here? It's completely flat. And look at the old one. Let's have a leap in there, you see that? A little leap to help seal. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna use the hold cover on the new, there, see if that seals properly. Use the new seals obviously, because the seals on the old one, they were all, uh, they are so brittle, look at that. They just crack. So let's gonna put this together and see what happens. Okay, so I managed to make one out of the two. I really believe it is sealed this time. It's gonna start the engine. Oh crap, and see what happens. Okay, straight away, I can see my airflow, which is exactly the same top and bottom. So, that looks good. Look at that, up and down. Bloody hell, I can't believe. Look, if I would take, um, so, if you watch my channel, you're gonna see another video. Uh, I didn't bought the parts myself, but you're gonna see another video with the exact same problem, where, well, not, not this problem, but where brand new parts, faulty, and it just makes you spin your head, it just makes you go round and round, because you fit a new part and you think, okay, I still have the problem. And it's very, you need to be very confident to actually go back and blame a brand new part, which was just my case. Uh, yeah, as soon as I got there, let me go in there to show you. Yeah, so, yeah, nothing now. So the brand new part, guys, as soon as I got here, it was leaking. You see, it was actually leaking. And uh, I managed to, and straight away I knew something was not right. Uh, now it looks good. I'm happy with that now. But a brand new part. Who, who would guess this? <laughs> brand new part, right. I'm not gonna lie, it was not leaking as bad as the old one with the completely ripped thingy, but look at that. Look at my fuel trims now. Look, two and four, look at that, brilliant. Oscillating up and down, lovely, absolutely lovely. I should have showed you uh, with the new part before I've done what I've done, but uh, yeah, so, wow brand new part well I think once again new does not always mean it's good <laughs> wow right I'm not gonna dwell on this anymore the problem is fixed now and I'm so happy that it's fixed so that's me accelerate a little bit just make sure it's good yeah Lovely, look at that. Brilliant. I'm so pleased. So pleased. Right. Oh, I really re regret I haven't showed you the new part leaking as well. But guys, you've seen me with both parts opened. Um, you're going to see that. <laughs> see if I can still... I know that I have nothing to prove. But see if I can show you that this is the cover of the new part. Don't know if you can see... Let me see if I can get some sort of... Ah, uh, crap. Not even manufacturing data. I could show you this is brand new. Nah, the manufacturing data is not recorded here. So, which is a little bit crap. But guys, this is indeed the new part. You can see it's probably too clean. As well, look at that, it's clean in there. This is the new part, this is the old seals I took from, so this seal was from there, from the old one. It's completely brittle, look at that, just breaks. This is the seal from there, from the old one. So I used the new seals, okay. That's the old 
thingy, the old membrane. That's the, the spring. This is the old cover, as you can see, full of carbon. So that's the old cover. And, uh, and we managed from both to make a good one. Lovely, look at that. Running perfect. Gladio. Let's just uh, make sure our code now is not is no longer current. Should not be, I hope. Should be passed. There we go. Passed and failed, which means in this case means it's gone. The 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 is not there anymore. So let me just uh, turn the engine off. Mission back on. Let's clear these codes. Let's add the module. Clear. Yeah. There we go. Code is gone. Let's start the engine. Running beautiful. And... Data display again. I don't really need to be show you this again, but just to show you once more, once last time, look at that. Right, lesson learned. <sighs> That's why I always tell people to go to the dealer, get parts from the dealer. Likely we managed to make a good one, but otherwise it would be nearly impossible to return this part. So, yeah. But yeah, uh, job done, guys. Um, I think that's it. It turned out to be quite interesting in the end. Uh, but yeah, we got it fixed and that's it, guys. Um, maybe i show you once more, just quickly. Uh, you'll see our O2 sensor doing a lovely, where's my fuel sensor? O2 sensor, look at that. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Right, that's it for this video, guys. What else to say? Um, hope you enjoyed the video. Um, hope there's some information here uh, you're gonna find useful. When you fit new parts, guys, you need to make sure you know exactly why you're changing them and you need to know everything about them. Otherwise, it can trick you quite easily. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you guys have any questions, any comments, uh, please put them below. And like always, thanks for watching.